Welcome back, Time Cruisers. I'm your host, R.R. Slugger, and today we're taking a look at the final set in the Time Cruiser series, 6494 Mystic Mountain Time Lab. Depicting Dr. Cyber's Mountainside Laboratory, this set serves as the crown jewel in the Time Cruisers catalog. Not only does it contain a vast array of accessories and play features, but it also includes all of our previous heroes and more. The first of our returning characters is Timmy Time... Wait a minute. Before we proceed, I need to clear something up. All my life, I've been calling this character Timmy Time Warp, and yet... I've been unable to find a single source citing this surname. I'm not sure if it was just something regional in a Canadian magazine, as we've seen a ton of renaming throughout this era in LEGO Media, or if I simply came up with the name myself, but I just wanted to let you know that the name Timmy Time Warp needs citation. That's all. Dr. Cyber would be remiss not to be present in his own flagship set, so of course he makes a reappearance here. Alongside him once again is the lovable monkey Ali. We also have the guest appearance of a floppy armed skeleton, a classic Lego minifigure to be sure. Finally, making its debut here is Robbie the Robot. This invention of Dr. Cyber's was designed to help out around the lab, occasionally assisting on adventures. While primarily consisting of common pieces, Robbie's face print is a reuse of the 1994 spy reestroid Major Kartofsky and is actually making its final appearance in the time lab today. This face print would later go on to inspire a modern recreation in 2021, and that actually leads us to the most remarkable reference to time cruisers in another set, 80036 The City of Lanterns, which I have already talked about in another video. Just like with the Hypnocruiser and Flying Time Vessel, the Mystic Mountain Time Lab features six disguises to be used by our time travelers. Some of these inclusions are fairly notable, so let's go through them one at a time. Starting with this curved Conquistador helmet, this can make for quite the skeletal Spaniard should you desire. This odd brown farmer's cowl is from a mold that quite shockingly probably still exists to this day. Granted, we will never see it in the original brown color again. Once again, we receive an Ice Planet helmet, so the Doctor must be fond of traveling to the icy mines of Christo. These final three pieces of headgear are much larger and more noteworthy than the first batch. This bulky single-piece diving suit is making its final appearance here, though the visor itself would go on to be featured in one last set. Likewise, if we discount set reissues, then this Islander mask is also making its final appearance as well. The white plumage is notably absent, however, though I happen to know a set where you can find a spare. Lastly, this all-too-common black dragon helmet is actually adorned with set-exclusive yellow ornamentations. I have no idea where Dr. Cyber traveled to in order to get his hands on this, but it certainly wasn't any theme that saw retail release. Overall, these hats and helmets make for an impressive collection, even if they don't quite pair off as well as the previous sets did. In addition to the disguises mentioned before, the Mystic Mountain Time Lab also features a wide array of accessories. A giant battle axe, brown spear, and chrome silver sword make for an intimidating arsenal, though I do once again question the Doctor's motives. The glow-in-the-dark magic wand returns once again from its inclusion in the Flying Time Vessel. This pair of classic trans-neon orange ice planet skis are making one final appearance here today, and they're joined by another staple piece from this theme, albeit in light grey. Anachronistically, this almost makes me feel like this is a piece lifted from Rock Raiders, though surely that isn't the case, right? No Time Cruiser set is complete without a vast selection of accessories and headgear, and this collection is surely the most diverse so far. Hilariously though, all of these items are supposed to be chucked into various cubbies and literal trash cans around the laboratory. <laughs> Maybe this is Robbie's idea of cleaning up. Getting to the time lab itself now, we can see that the structures are situated at the base of Mystic Mountain beside a basin of water. It's an atmospheric look that I quite like. Sprawling across three separate base plates, the time lab can transform itself into several layouts through the use of these hinges. 
The base plates themselves add a significant amount of size to the model, and the pair of blue 16x16s were actually exclusive to this set for over a decade. Since the build is partitioned into three movable parts, let's look at each section individually. I'll remove the hinges to make this easier. Starting on the far left side, this portion of the model features a rock formation and conspicuous trans-neon orange window. These two elements were both mainstays in 1993's Ice Planet and are actually making their final appearance in this set. This corner piece in particular is especially rare as it was only ever included in one other set, the magnificent Deep Freeze Defender. But that's another tale for another time. Atop the rock face are these evenly spaced cylinder bricks, perhaps alluding to battlements found in the castle series that Time Cruisers draws inspiration from. Within the rock wall sits a rather robust catapult system, capable of launching two barrels of hot lava into the air. A volcano science experiment, I love it! One small peculiarity is this ray gun looking device clipped into the wall here. I think it's supposed to be a light source and not an accessory, but your guess is as good as mine. Beyond that, there is little else to see here. Let's move on to the next section. The far right side of the set gives us our most residential look to the building. Besides the giant rooftop telescope that we'll talk about in a minute, by and large this section represents the mundane core underneath all the zany shenanigans that I love so much in Time Cruisers. The exterior features two red doors, two outside lamps, and a pair of arched windows making their very first appearance in red. The gentle slope to the roof leads to the before-mentioned telescope which actually incorporates a few noteworthy pieces of its own. The long, black octagonal brick creating the optical tube is making its final appearance, unfortunately. Part 6037 was cut down long before its time, having only been featured in nine sets total with a lifespan of less than four years. I think Dr. Cyber must have seen the value in this piece as he managed to grab one for his time lab just before they disappeared forever. The telescope can rotate and adjust accordingly via this light grey hinge brick. I would say it's also making its final appearance, though it was later featured in a freestyle bucket and mistakenly made a random appearance on the top of the European box for the Rock Raiders HQ when someone apparently forgot to crop it out. Uh, yeah, that's my contribution to the sentences never before spoken by a human club. If we look to the interior of the module, we can see that there really isn't much going on in here. There are a pair of poles for mounting some of the helmets on, but other than that, a whole lot of nothing. The large iron door here actually ties its roots back to Fabuland, which explains why it's always felt slightly out of scale with minifigures. Not to go on too much of a tangent, but there are a ton of other elements that owe their wonkiness to being designed for Fabuland figures first and foremost. Maybe another topic for another time. The last thing I wanted to comment on is how the blue base plate feels like a double-edged sword here. From the exterior of the set, the blue surroundings immensely add to the mystique of the whole affair, where standard green would have just looked ordinary in its place. However, once inside the building, it really starts to feel like everyone is wading through ankle-deep water at all times. Maybe this was intentional, but it does strain credulity, I must admit. Finally, we arrive at the last section of the Mystic Mountain Time Lab. This module gives us a look at the titular mountain, here represented with several large rock wall pieces. These not so affectionately named Big Ugly Rock Pieces were a vital part of LEGO in the 90s. Burps, lerps, and even merps are going to be the subject of a future video of mine, so I won't say too much here, other than I think they substantially add to this set. I feel like the design choices of LEGO sets can be represented with a triangle, with each point representing a factor in realizing the model. The three points would be labeled size, detail, and price. From those three, you can pick any two that the set would prioritize at the expense of the other. For example, you could have an inexpensive detailed set, but it would be smaller to compensate. You could have a large detailed set, but then a higher price has to be placed on it to accommodate. 
In the case of the Mystic Mountain Time Lab, I feel like size was the obvious priority here, with detail and price having to take somewhat of a backseat in order to allow this to happen. It's not an exact science by any means, and even though I feel this set prioritizes one point of the triangle, I don't think it entirely slumps on price or detail. It just makes some concessions in those departments. Returning to the section in question here, I know we all want to talk about the chair on a pole that is also on fire, but we'll get there. For now, let's bask in some of the surrounding details because there is a fair amount of them. The light grey pier supported by yellow pips is one of my favourite parts of the model and perfectly aligns with the door from a neighbouring section. There's also a brown ladder leading up to an alternate entrance into the lab. Along the dockside grows a classic palm tree of the shorter leaf variant, which I find preferable to the alternative. These long, retired, segmented trunk pieces perfectly allow you to position the tree to your liking, and… well… Okay, seriously, can we stop pretending that modern brick-built trees look good? Look at those hideous Technic elements, that looks awful! Why have Lego trees, especially palm trees, regressed so significantly? It's as if they've underwent a de-evolution. Contrary to the typical journey where janky brick-built ideas are later realized with proper molds, we've since retired the proper molds in favor of janky brick-built ideas. I don't know what the perfect solution for Lego botany is, but I'm telling ya, this ain't it. Beside the perfectly sculpted perennial of the past lies a rather inconspicuous yet notable element. This light grey double window with panes is actually set exclusive to the time lab and is being retired here after only appearing in two other sets over the course of an entire decade. What a bizarre piece to be included. Near the top of the mountain sits an antennae and radio dish with a very odd connection point. The box art and the instructions disagree as to how to attach this element, though neither option is really any good. I'd just forego the top clip and place the antennae on the stud, even if it messes up Dr. Cyber's satellite reception. A detail that's fairly easy to miss is hiding just along the side of the mountain. This flexible hose is actually the same type we see with the Hypnocruiser and Rock Raiders, so it's obviously a personal favourite of mine. But why is it here? Well, we've been dancing around it, but this hose is here to refuel the main feature of the time lab, the detachable flying house. Complete with two rare green lattice panes and a time travel control board, this might be Dr. Cyber's most stealthy time machine yet. Who's going to notice a new house on the block? Has anyone noticed that building there before? Inside the time lab, we see all of the before-mentioned storage areas for accessories, as well as Time Cruiser's final hypno disc. The piece itself would actually go on to have a long career with Timmy and the Doctor in the freestyle theme, though we'll talk about that later. Beyond that, there have been other similar elements introduced throughout the years, though nothing can quite top that original white and red. The rubber bands and exposed wheels inform us that there's a play feature afoot. Turning the hand crank at the bottom not only powers the hypno disc, but it also starts a chain reaction leading to this tall technic pull. Atop the spire is, you guessed it, the chair on a pole that is also on fire. The time travel controls give us the clue that this is also a tiny time machine. I've heard the expression flying by the seat of your pants, but I've never seen it literally before. Speaking of time machines, we actually receive one more in this set, in the form of this nasty space boat. Featuring the final appearance of these yellow underslung engines, this space boat is fully equipped for adventure. I enjoyed this original design so much that it inspired a similar Time Cruisers mock from yours truly. By adding some kooky flowers and flags, I tried to lean into the freestyle aesthetic somewhat, and I'm still quite happy with the results. 
Taken as an overall package, the Mystic Mountain Time Lab really has it all. Creating a large footprint, this set can be hinged and orientated to your heart's content, then sealed up with this included brick if you wish to enclose all four sides. There's a ton of room for expansion if you want to enhance the interior, and the exterior makes a notable use of dark grey pieces a couple of years before it became a mainstay colour in rotation. It's simply hard not to recommend this one for all of the reasons mentioned in this video. We're leaving this series on a high note. With that, we've taken an in-depth look at all seven of the Time Cruisers and Time Twisters retail sets. Just like with 4990 signaling the end of the Rock Raiders series though, I'm sure we'll still see more Time Cruisers episodes pop up on Slugger's channel. If I had to give a quick slugometer rating to all of the Time Cruiser sets in the order I would prioritize collecting them, it would be as follows. Rocket Racer, 1 slug. Time Tunnelator, 3 slugs. Hypno Cruiser, 3 slugs and the set to get seal of approval. Whirling Time Warper, also 3 slugs. Flying Time Vessel, 2 slugs. Twisted Time Train, also two slugs. Mystic Mountain Time Lab, I teetered on three, but ultimately two slugs is the right call. In short, try to snag one of the many great mid-tier offerings, then grab one of the larger sets afterwards. You could pair them off as rivals, or just grab a couple of sets of your preferred faction. As for Timmy and the Doctor, whatever became of them? Well, as mentioned previously, the freestyle theme that promised a return to the basic brick building of yesteryear became a fitting home for the two of them. The duo actually saw the theme through to the end, after which Timmy went on to feature in a few more sets. Tim was last seen in 2004, doing some traveling the old-fashioned way. And probably on some government watch list. Above all else, hopefully this series has shown Time Cruisers the love I've felt it's deserved this entire time. It's my desire that folks stop judging this theme unfairly or in bad faith. It had a lot to offer and still does in many ways. I think most of these sets represent high points in LEGO's history, contrary to what detractors may say. Thank you for joining me on this ride. As stated all the way back in my Primer episode, this was quite the leap of faith coming off the built-in fanbase of Rock Raiders. I had no idea how a Time Cruisers retrospective would be received, but I'm so happy I took the plunge anyways. Communicating with you fine folks over these past months has been awesome, and even I've come to appreciate the theme more in doing so. To be entirely truthful, creating this second retrospective series took much longer than I anticipated, so it's made me wary about jumping right into another one, especially with the How to Build Rock Raiders series still ongoing in the background. Nonetheless, 2023 marks the 20th anniversary of a landmark LEGO theme, and I wouldn't miss it for the world. I've been your host, R.R. Slugger, and time flies when you're having fun.